Hi, my name is Peter Walker. This is a, a reflection on a, a passage uh, I love of Jesus, um, but it's more his angle. It, it kind of calibrates and, and awakens in me perspective. You know, sometimes I find myself pondering the divinity of Christ. Often, if I'm talking to people, that's what's in question, and that's legit. That was the question. If you read in John 10, that's the dispute of the Pharisees with him. They, they want to know, are you the Christ? They knew the Christ was going to be divine. Uh, Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 9, they knew that the prophecies of the Christ was that the Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, was divine. And so they would come to Jesus and say, tell us, are you the Christ? And quite frankly, that is what Jesus was telling us, and it is that identity that he calls us to believe. So the question, the pondering, the looking at, the staring into Christ's divinity, that's the question. That's okay. But sometimes we get removed from life's divinity, and we're thinking on Jesus, divine or not divine. And I love this in John 10, John 10, 34. Now they're up against them. They pick up stones to stone him. After John 10, 30, he said, I and the Father are one. They pick up stones. They want to stone him. But this is the intense situation going on. Is he divine? And it's the same with us. Our whole life pivots on it. If he is, you either want to pick up stones and stone him, or you need to kneel to his divinity. So it's a big question. It'll cost us our life to answer that question. But Jesus John 10, 34, he turns to the Pharisees while they're debating, do we kill this man? He said, listen, he said, your own psalmist writes, and he quotes Psalm 82, 6, you are all sons of God. And he says, so, you know, when you're considering whether I sent by the Father am divine, he, he's like, listen, life's divine. Genesis 1, 27, God made man in his image. Whatever about God himself expressed in human form. Colossians 1, 15 to 20, Hebrews 1, 3, Colossians 2, 9. Whatever about Jesus being divine, Jesus says, you're divine. And I think we often lose sight of the miracle of life as we question the miracle of God in Jesus. We forget that our questioning is miraculous. The breath we breathe, the light in our eyes, the, the thoughts going through our mind, you are a son of God. Psalm 82, 6. Life is an expression of the divine. And then the question is whether this expression of God himself in his own creation, Jesus Christ, is God, is the one. But Jesus wakens us. And, and here's one reason we lose sight. Life becomes mundane to us, not because it's not divine or miraculous, but because we're so used to the miraculous. Jesus works this life in a gritty way, the same way God formed and created, Christ created. Mark 8, 22 to 26, when Jesus heals the blind man, he spits and gets mud and rubs it in his eyes. He asks the guy, can you see? He's like, partially. Jesus says, go wash, and, and he finishes what he began, the same way he will finish the faith in us that he began. But God works with processes. Jesus worked with processes. We are in process, even as we consider, is Jesus the Christ? But then Jesus said, but don't forget, you're divine. Life's divine. Everything is of God. Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. Ezekiel 18, 4, all souls are mine. God said, in questioning Christ's divinity, just remember, your questioning, your mind, is God's divinity.